Uh, hi, I'm Roan. I'm from Geelong and I now live in Melbourne, but I'm back in Geelong Gallery working on this immersive installation, which is my latest artwork, and I thought I'd talk to you a bit more about it. In 2019, I started discussions with the senior curator, Lisa Sullivan, about what we were going to develop here, and this installation in the Douglas Gallery was the major kind of component of the work and how we were going to create this was our greatest challenge. I went through the archives and found quite a few works that reflected or kind of connected together with the installation and key pieces like the uh, Frederick McCubbin Bush Burial is such an important piece to Geelong Gallery and even myself coming here growing up and like it's a piece that's almost always on display at the Geelong Gallery and knowing how important it is to the gallery is like it, it felt so right to try and include it within my installation um, and so having to work with that and reproduce those works by uh, printing them in a way that they still look like the originals and keeping that scale and you know, to kind of play on that idea of uh, what if they were kind of left and slowly destroyed. How we were going to create this was our greatest challenge, um, mainly on the sense of logistics, but also how it was going to um, talk and reflect pieces of the Geelong Gallery's collection. And one of the big inspirations going through the collection with Lisa was the Florence Royce's beautiful ceramics that she had made and the really muted kind of colours within those ceramics and how they have this kind of faded beauty and that was a real kind of inspiration point for the colours that we brought into the exhibition, just sort of real subtle colours. Like there is quite a rainbow of colours within the room and the installation but everything's knocked back so far that it becomes almost lost but if you look for it hard enough you'll start to see it. Working with the Geelong Gallery, it's been such an amazing experience how, you know, it's such a beautiful space and I kind of wanted to make it look dishevelled and destroyed and they've given me a lot of um, freedom and knowing that with the team I'm working with we can develop ideas and logistics behind anything we do that can be reversed and being careful with like such an important building and the heritage of it that um, anything we we do do, can we, we can take it back. And one of the key things was the the floor um, and working with Godfrey Hurst to be able to produce this carpet, um, which we still, I haven't got a plan B if that didn't work. Um, and the ceiling itself to take over the entire space. Um, so creating the, you know, the floor ceiling and all the walls, it's a real kind of 360 experience. It's strange to say, like, if I create a new works, this exhibition, because defining new works um, once may have meant something on a canvas, but now I see a lot of my works is the installation itself and in the future, the documentation. So it is more about capturing the installation that becomes a photograph and the importance of that documentation is now the work, especially once this installation is gone, um, that is all that will remain. So right now the, the work is possibly the installation, but in the future it will just remain as the documentation, like that is the new work that I've created. Um, there's also been a recreation as part of the survey of look back at some of the installations I've done in the past and there was one that stood out that I really thought we could remake um, that was based in a, a weatherboard house in Melbourne of the Amiga project and we were able to source or find a lot of the original objects that we had in the space and then from 3D scans um, we could recreate from the measurements and get everything built back to scale and repaint everything and match the colours and um, we've got a life 
size replica of a previous installation and it's quite surreal to see um, knowing that I saw that building be bulldozed um, you know four or five years ago. The big consideration for displaying my work in the gallery was how people were going to um, interact with the installation where I've often had immersive exhibitions where people can walk into a space but they can't um, go through half the room like you can view it from a certain area or a corner but um, this being such a big space we kind of wanted to invite people to go to either end so we had to take into consideration um, things like uh, trip hazards and um, wheelchair access and enough lighting so you can see what's on the floor and having a nice level floor even though it may look broken and uneven um, and it's still actually a relatively clean space as well because we have to consider the rest of the gallery's collection as well so there's a lot of consideration taken into those little details. Previous exhibitions we also had a lot of dust and you know we didn't want that to affect anything within the permanent collection so an alternative we worked out instead of using dust we could actually just use um, paint and just like spray that and let it settle on the objects like dust and it became a permanent fixture on all the objects and it has the same effect and it can't be rubbed off and it can't move on to other surfaces and uh, then you know get anywhere else within the gallery. There's, there's a lot of differences with this project but probably the greatest difference is the fact that I'm working with an institution and nine out of ten projects I've done in the past have been self uh, curated or presented where I'll find a space and work with either an owner or developer to kind of take over that space and do whatever I want to do with it but here I'm working with a, a gallery and they have an entire team and it's actually been really wonderful to be able to turn around and ask questions of people who are like so experienced with this and like the um, they're handling things that I didn't even know that needed to be handled or I usually have to stay up late and do it on my computer and it's like oh no we've got a whole team who does all that stuff and thinks about it and it's like oh this is wonderful and just let me be able to focus more on creating the artwork and that for me has been um, yeah a really fantastic experience. I definitely take into consideration conservation of the artworks that were that are in the survey, especially down to the types of paint and glues and the printing of the photographs and the types of glass and like there's a lot of important conservation there. So those artworks last a long time, but it's almost the opposite when it comes to the installation where we've made things that are so fragile that um, we know that as soon as we remove them from this room, they're going to fall apart. Like there's a lot of really small, precious things that we've, we've you know, we've glued down or it's a furniture that we've um, burnt or charcoaled and other things that we've kind of worn away that won't last. And, you know, the woods have been covered in bleach in some circumstances and that's got a long-term effect that's going to destroy it. So it's the absolute opposite of conservation in that environment but the installations aren't designed to last and so that's kind of why they're important for people to come and view them in person and experience and then that's kind of why the documentation is so important because that's where my work will live on in the future um, not so much as installation but as a you know photograph or a film. <laughs>